Hey, I'm Nason Tackett with Hear Technologies in Huntsville, Alabama, and we're doing a series on showing how to hook up our Hearback Pro to different uh, soundboards. And uh, what we've got with us here today is a analog Mackie. It's a uh, SR32-4 VLZ Pro. One of our um, co-workers was uh, nice enough to, um, I think, borrow this from their church. And uh, so we've got this uh, here uh, to give some examples of how uh, you can come out of this console and feed the, uh, the Hearback Pro with analog input cards. So what we have to demonstrate is we've actually got uh, some uh, multi-track audio, since we don't have a band in here, we've got uh, basically a canned band uh, playing in Ableton. And uh, so that's coming out of our computer and we're, we're basically getting stems that are analog uh, through an interface. and. Those, uh, we only have eight channels hooked up right now, uh, but you know, for this demonstration, um, we can kind of do a, a, quite a bit with just the eight channels to, to give you some ideas. Of course, you could have a lot more. But uh, right now, these are basically our eight stems that are coming into the, uh, the console. We're plugged into the, to the line inputs on the first eight channels. And uh, we've got a Hearback Pro system here. We've got the, the hub, and it's got two analog inputs. So, We've got the ability to do 16 channels, but we're, we're only going to hook up eight. So we just have one of the, um, the DB25 to um, eight uh, TRS quarter inch uh, cables. So these come with this, the uh, system. Actually, you get two of them uh, if you've got the two analog input cards. Of course, with the new V5 firmware, you can expand. You could put a third uh, analog input card to do 24 channels. You could even do a fourth one to do 32 and you could add another hub. You could basically go all the way up to 128 channels of analog if you really wanted to. Um, so just to give you an idea, the system can start small and, and scale up as you need it to. So we're going to uh, do a demonstration uh, and you'll actually be able to hear what we do on this mixer. So Max, why don't you hand that to me and I will start hooking some things up. So um, actually, um, we will make a note here. This, these colors, um, there, are, there are labels, but if the labels come off, uh, you can use the resistor color code. That's something easy that you can Google if you want to kind of see the, the order. But it starts with brown. Brown is channel one. So you go brown, then red, then orange, then yellow, then green, then blue, then violet, then gray. So the uh, first channel that I want to try to set up is going to be uh, channel one. Now, what I want to do is I want to try to do a drum submix, and to do that, I'm going to use an aux send on the console. So, on this console, that is over here, and I've got aux send number one. So, I'm going to go ahead and hook that up, and I think you've actually already got uh, yep, something it's going there. We are playing. We actually have drums are there on channel one. And what I've done basically, I, I have drums coming in a, a stereo on two channels. I have taken my aux number one and I've turned that up to about halfway uh, to kind of to unity. I've got my level over here set so that I'm not distorting. You know, I, I, if I turn it up a little too loud, you'll start to clip there. So I, I, I want to make sure that the, the LED on the front of the hub is kind of in the green is what you're hoping for. You know, it's okay if it kind of blinks in the yellow, but you don't want it enough to where it's going into the red. Um, now, if you're having a hard time uh, getting any level without clipping, what you can do is those analog cards, if you pull them out, there are jumpers on there. If you read the, the user manual that comes with it, it'll, it'll show you how you can remove those jumpers and it'll actually give you about, uh, I think it's about 12 or 14 dB of headroom. So if you want the ability to push the signal much stronger out of your console into the Hearback Pro, you can pull those jumpers off and then you've got a lot more headroom. Uh, so just wanted to note that. Now the next thing I want to do is I want, uh, I want to put bass on channel right. two. Two, all right. So bass is just going to be a single channel instead of eating up an aux send on my console, what I want to do is I want to use the direct out. Now, 
if you have a console that has just a dedicated direct out, that's great. You could just go ahead and plug that in there. This console doesn't. This doesn't have a direct out. It has an insert. And what you can do, there are insert cables that you can buy or make that basically take the tip ring sleeve and they break it out into two separate connectors. These are unbalanced. So you have the tip and then you have the ring and basically it's a send and return. Now one thing to note, if I plug this in on my base channel, I no longer have base showing up on my console because this has broken the signal path. To avoid doing that, you can build a special cable that, that has a jumper between the, the tip and the ring. So if these are shorted together, then when you plug it in, you'll still get the signal. It won't break that signal path. Because we're not really wanting to use this as an insert, as a send and return. We're basically just using it for as an output. We actually sell a insert yes, cable. It, it is basically, uh, it's a little bit shorter than this, but it basically has a TRS here and then it has just a single connector here. And it has that, that uh, shorted tip and ring so that you don't break that signal path. But for this demonstration, I don't care that I'm not getting bass on my console. You probably will if you're trying to mix and you need bass guitar in the front of house. But for this, we're just gonna use the, um, the tip so that I get the signal. And actually, I'm gonna use a little extension cable. I'm gonna feed this back over here. Alternatively, you could always take back this insulation so that you have longer leads coming off of this if you need bigger to be able to, out. yeah, bigger fan out. So this is gonna be my bass guitar and I wanna put it on channel two, which is red. Now it looks like we're distorting pretty good. I'm gonna try to gain it down. How's that sound? That's, that's in the green now. All right, so that's our, our bass. Now, um, you know, one thing that uh, is pretty useful is uh, to have the, um, the, the overall mix on uh, a, a set of channels. So why don't we put that on seven and eight? Seven and eight, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my seven and eight and I'm going to come out of my, um, my main outs And so this should actually give you kind of an overall mix. Um, drums, we've lost bass because we've got that insert there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we've got, um, uh, should probably be guitars and then some key, occasional keys. Yeah. All right, so this is a good way to capture everything because for a lot of people, they may only need to hear the front of house mix. And so you've got that on you know, one or two knobs that's a quick way to just get everything that you need to hear. And then what you can do is if you need a little more of something, you could then go to the more me knobs, you know, more, more drums, more bass. Um, maybe they need the metronome. Um, you know, that might be another thing that, uh, click track, yeah. you know, for the, the click track. So what I'll do, if I had another insert cable, I would probably go that route. But for, for this demonstration, I'm gonna take my channel three and how about I put it on a, um, let's put it on a subgroup instead of, a, of an aux send. So over here I've got some sub outs. I could use number one, and then I could basically take and assign this to number one. And do you have, um, you've got metronome on, Three should be on three, I guess. Is on three along the drum oh, yeah, we need to unassign there we go. everybody else. Click track. Is it just click now? Yep. Okay, so now, based on the console, I've got these little buttons that I can assign things to a, to a sub, uh, sub mix over here or a sub group. And right now, I've only got the metronome assigned to that. So, you know just showing you some different options that you can do, you know, either using the aux sends, using the, uh, the subgroups, 
using the main left and right output and also using the direct outs on a channel. So really, there's not really a right way to do this. It's going to be based on what your needs are, what your setup is. You can use a combination of some of these different features. Every console is going to be different too. Some consoles also have matrix outputs, which kind of allow you to kind of take a combination of a lot of different things like auxes and subgroups and you know things like that. So um, basically, uh, you know, let's do one more. Let's do one more aux just to kind of show we kind of got the idea here. Let's put it on four. And I'm going to go ahead and use another aux. I'm going to go with aux two. And let's turn it down to start with. See what's, all right, I'm going to bring that up and then let's try to put, uh, let's put some guitars. So this will be on four. four. You getting, getting some guitars? Yes, we do. All right, maybe I also want to put some keys too. Are you getting keys now? Yep, got keys and guitar. And so I can control that mix. I'm basically building a sub mix on this console, which is really the better way to do it because Yes, our system has the ability to do the submixing, but it really makes sense for workflow to do it on their console if you can do it. That way, you're doing it in one place, you can do some processing on it, you can do dynamics on it. If you're already going to be doing, you know, a submix um, or an aux mix for something else on your front of house console, then you might as well use that as just a single channel that you feed into this system. That way your, your front of house engineer has control over that. If you do it on the mixer, then basically it's kind of on a, on a per mixer basis. Although you could set up a drum mix on one and you could copy and paste it to others. So there's, there's a lot of flexibility, but um, we definitely recommend if you've got the ability to do some sub mixing to do it on your, on your console or on your DAW and then it just simplifies things. Then you're not tying up nearly as many channels going out to the, the, uh, the hearback system. Um, instead of having to send like eight drum channels, you're doing a submix and then you're only sending, you know, a, a one channel or a, maybe a stereo pair um, yeah, there you go. to the hearback pro. But the neat thing about it too, one thing to remember is the way you set up your channels in order to send to us, you should be post EQ pre fader. That way, if they have to turn the guitar player down in the mains, it's not going to affect the monitor system. Yes, good point. So. And, and you really kind of want that EQ because that way, uh, you know, the front of house uh, engineer is going to be listening to the room, and most likely, a lot of those EQ changes there, that are being made are because of the acoustics in the room and or the also the tone of the, the instrument as well. So likely uh, the EQing that's being done is probably going to also benefit the, the uh, monitoring system. So you might as well go ahead and take a, a post EQ uh, pre-fader and possibly if you have some dynamics processing like a compressor, you also want to kind of come after that too. That way that's also benefiting your uh, uh, in-ear mix as well. There's not run one right way, we just wanted to kind of give some examples of different things that you can do with one of these analog consoles. Um, if you have any questions or you know want any advice, reach out. Um, you can find us on the web at heartechnologies.com. We're also on, on Twitter and uh, Instagram and YouTube and we're all over the place. So whatever makes sense, reach out to us and, uh, and ask us any questions that you might have. Thank you.